I was told I couldn't do it, so I kind of just wanted to prove everybody wrong. So I just had my 50th professional fight in Edmonton uh, in April, and um, I've been with the WBC forever, so um, I got this special belt awarded to me last night at the convention. These conventions are unreal. You get to meet and see people who become part of your family. So once a year, if, if you're not lucky to see them throughout the year, once a year you get to reunite with your WBC family. So um, these events are always super special. So memories are always created at these things, lifetime memories. It's always interesting. I, I remember back to 2006 in Cancun, um, the WBC just started um, honoring women champions in 2005. Um, so I was at that event, a night of champions, 2006, and there was myself, um, Sharon Anjos from Australia, and who else was with us? I think Leila Ali, and there was one other female. And we were the only champions at the time. I was the first WBC Super Featherweight World Champion ever, um, female. And so to see the sport, the women's boxing, progress and grow, to watch it, to witness it, to be a part of it, is just something truly incredible. It's, it's um, something I'll always be proud of. So I believe there's three things in boxing you can't teach. One of them is hard work, the second is heart, and the third is power. I think you can develop power, but I don't think you can teach that pure, genuine knockout punch. You either have it or you don't, and you try and work around it if you don't, and if you do, you just try and harness it to be perfect. I always find this question hard because it's hard to always look back when you're so, so much looking forward. Um, but boxing has given me a life. Like it's, I mean, I had a life before and I have a life outside of boxing, but it's given me a family. It's given me motivation. It's given me encouragement. It has changed my life. It's helped me become the person and the woman that I am today. I've learned how to be an ambassador. I've learned how to be a role model. I've learned how to be a good sport and a bad sport. I've learned so much throughout this journey of boxing that I kind of fell into accidentally, so most of all, I'm just grateful. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I try and find a balance between living normally and living as an athlete. And I think uh, life is about choices, and as long as you make the right ones, then you really can't regret or be upset for the sacrifices you make, because the sacrifices you make give you opportunities like this. I would never be in the Ukraine at a WBC convention waiting on Chavez to, so I can get my interview done. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, those are, there are bigger problems I could have in my life, and that's just not one of them. You know, everybody knows their role in boxing, and I know when one of the gods of boxing walks in, you just get up and move. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's one of those things you don't ever learn right away. I think it's one of those things that it, as long as you still think you need to work, when you don't think you have it, you work harder to get it. And I still, even now, I mean, 50 fights, eight world titles, I still want more. And so for me, I didn't truly believe in myself until I won my first world title. Um, I won it in 2005 with a spectacular six round knockout, left hook. Couldn't have wrote the story any better myself. And it wasn't until that point, even in the corner, I'm looking and I was still in shock because you're like the best in the world at something. You, you don't realize it until you're wearing this belt around your waist and you're like, wow, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and I didn't even believe in it until, I don't know, like a week later. I was like, pinch me because I'm dreaming. Was, was that your favorite moment, your, your, your highest? Uh... Oh, I have so many amazing moments. I mean, when you have 50 fights, you, it's hard to pick just one, but that will always be special to me. Um, I have a few fights that will always be up there as number one. My very first professional fight, 
amazing to get into that ring, to feel those gloves, the no headgear, to just be able to perform in front of people with those lights on. That'll always be super special to me. Um, this fight, or this fight, of course, my 50th fight, now is probably my number one. Um, my first world title. Uh, I also had a fight where I got cut in the second round and I fought blood everywhere. I fought to the sixth round and ended up winning the fight. Um, that one's special because it taught me a lot about myself, how far I can push myself and still succeed. Um, to never really give up because you never know what you're going to achieve. So there's each fight to me means something a little different and uh, they've all taught me something. Even my first loss, I mean, I hate it, but it taught me um, to pick and choose your family and who, who you keep around you very carefully and to make sure you have your eyes wide open to not believe in the drama and the hype. You have to believe in yourself. So everything you go through in life helps you get to where you're going. Well, you know, that's the reality of sport. At the end of the day, one day the lights are gonna go out and nobody's gonna care. I grew up in a family, a business family, so one of the reasons why my dad never wanted me to get into boxing was because he wanted me to run our family business. Um, but I was lucky enough to find boxing and I chose different avenues. So I actually have taken the next step post fights. I hate it, so you guys see me roll my eyes. I'm not ready to retire, but um, I've opened a boxing studio, so I've opened a business. Um, and you have to always pr prepare for, for that moment because I find a lot of athletes don't prepare pop properly and they go into a major depression when they retire. Um, and they find that they're lost. They have to find their next purpose and sometimes that takes a really long time. I've been fortunate enough to meet some amazing people, amazing athletes who prepare you for this and they, they are guided, they're my guidance, you know, and so, you know, eventually when that day comes, you know, I'll have a lot of friends, a lot of shoulders to lean on and a lot of people expecting more from me. So I'm lucky that I've surrounded myself with those kind of people, but I do see around some people don't and when the lights go out, it's really hard. I'm selfish and when I'm in the gym, I just want to train myself. So uh, I don't think, I think when I retire, I need time away from the gym. Um, I'd be interested in getting into some commentating or boxing analysts or stuff like that. I really like dissecting fights and watching them and critiquing. Um, I also have no filter, so what I say is what I think. And you know, that sometimes is entertaining, sometimes gets you in trouble. Women need more exciting fights. The women need to step up, fight each other, and uh, you know, they need to, you know what's great about women's boxing is that no one knows how to lose. It's not like you take a guy who's one in 10 and he knows his role. He knows he's gonna lose that fight. Women, the most incredible thing about women, and this is why they're always the most exciting fight on the show, is because women are so stubborn and determined to leave everything all the time in the ring. So that's what makes these fights exciting. I would love to see better matchups. Um, you know, I would love to see, um, you know, top 10 girls always go at it. And I would love to see some women throw down. Like, I, I want people to step in the pocket and fight with me. So I hate people who run. I'm not a person who loves runners. It's annoying, the fights get boring. Like, why don't you just step toe to toe and let it all out? Is your heart gold and your blood green? Of course. <laughs> That's all since, since 2005. <laughs>